Hello, good afternoon. Brian Moore will be paying his own special tribute to Bobby Moore at 4.30 this afternoon here on LWT. Coming up on the London match, we've got all the First Division goals and a special feature on Millwall as they look to put their promotion run back on track at Cambridge. And we've also got a competition. You can win a couple of pairs of tickets to a gala dinner for the great Fulham player, Johnny Haynes. But first of all, the action from here at Brisbane Road. And here's Brian with the teams. Well, a crucial day for Orient's promotion hopes here. And in this team, they're without Kenny Anchampong, who's away with the Ghanaian World Cup squad. Danny Benstock wears the number eight shirt. And there was relief in the camp when 21-year-old defender Adrian Whitbread was passed fit an hour ago. He tweaked an ankle, or tweaked a, a muscle, rather, in training on Wednesday. Good scouting and good housekeeping are really a part of Orient's philosophy. And Ricky Otto is one they picked up for just a £1,000 from Haringey. Ricky's four goals in the last four games uh, indicate that that is a really good investment. He got a hat-trick against Brighton as well. But Stokes, Mark Steen, once of QPR, Luton and Oxford, is a much more impressive record this season. 23 so far for him. He really has spearheaded Stokes' promotion drive. Today, in this Stokes side, he's supported by Steve Foley, back after suspension, and Carl Beeston, back after injury. It's a side that's racing away, 10 points clear at the top, unbeaten in their last 25 league games. The referee today, David Frampton from Dorset. Orient in the red strip, right shorts. That's underway, attacking the goal to our left. Stoke this afternoon. What a strip that is. Purple and lilac shirts, it says, with an amber trim and purple shorts. Bordello United, you reckon? But certainly the Stoke players that are wearing that garish strip are in tremendous form, as I say, unbeaten in the last 25 in the league racing away towards promotion to the first division under manager Lou McCarthy. Knocked in there by John Butler, headed away by Gary Bellamy for Orient. Sanford knocking it forward, again Bellamy for Lake Orient. Throw then to Stoke City. Esteen, and they really have to watch and uh, Orient don't need me to tell them that. They were leading by a goal to nil with uh, about three minutes to go up at the Victoria Ground in October and were beaten right at the death with two goals from Mark Steen. Had a very heavy snow flurries in the last hour and a wind that is whipping up and behind Stoke City. Foley knocking it back, Cranston knocking it forward again, Foley, the number seven, Beeston, and in the end a goal kick, as uh, Dominic Ludden allows the ball to cross the line there, it's Kevin Russell, the rooster they call him, and there's young Dominic Ludden, just 18 years old, and Lou Macari, Centre there has made a really good job with the manager's position at Stoke. Overson with a header. Beeston just knocking it on. Ludden getting in for Leighton Orient. Ian Cranston, a lot of experience. This one there towards Steen, but Steen well watched by Warren Hackett. Ben Stock gets it back. Oh, it's a bad clearance there by the goalkeeper. Steen with a chance of picking this up, but in the end, uh, Dominic Ludden gets it away for Orient. Otto, Ben Stock. No nonsense about him, clearing that one away quickly. Russell turning it in again for Stoke. Hackett beaten there by a combination of Beeston and uh, Steen. Russell taking it on for Stoke. There's his shot, but no great power, and still Orient can't get a challenge in. The wind is heavily against them. And no doubt Stoke will want to take advantage of that in the first half. But at the moment it's still nil-nil. Danny Carter on the far side for Leighton Orient. Orient throw. Terry Howard with it. Good servant of this Leighton Orient club is Terry. 
Seven last Thursday. Otto trying to get in. Stoke in a little bit of trouble there just for a moment. The final shot coming from Dominic Ludden, the 18-year-old, but he claimed it uh, clipped off a Stoke defender, but referee Frampton on the goal kick. First real bit of pressure, in fact, that uh, Leighton Orient have put on the Stoke goal. Ransom with the header for Stoke. Ryan again, but the whistle had gone for a free kick. It's going to be a foul on Ian Cranston. Cranston himself will take the kick, a player who's really had his share of injuries in his career, both at Ipswich and at uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Solid defender. Good appearance that time. I Whitbread for Leighton Orient. Hackett, Beeston with a shot, deflected, a super save! Great piece of goalkeeping there by Paul Heald. It was always going to be a difficult dipper, but then it was they, that much more difficult with a little deflection. That deflection there, and that became a really excellent save. So a corner for Stoke. And Foley's shot in amongst all those travelling Stoke City supporters behind that goal. So many of them behind that goal, it's almost, it's almost like uh, of Newcastle proportions. Something like three or four thousand, I would figure, down to East London today. Stoke, a club that's really taking off. Steen. Early running into trouble in the shape of Bellamy. It's Mark Cooper. goalkeepers the record books put him at five foot nine Scottish boy from Sterling Steen timed that one well Ludden got his header in as well for Orient shove on Vaughan Ryan a free kick to Orient Paul Heald will take it one excellent save to his credit he missed most of last season with a really nasty back injury Steen penalised for, I presume, a bit of elbowing on uh, Warren Hackett as they went for that one, and it's Hackett's former Tottenham youth player. Number nine for Orient. And it's Gary Bellamy then with this free kick. Keep it going. Beeston now for Stoke. Shaw's chasing this one. And it might come straight for Russell. There could be problems here. But in the end, uh, Russell's claiming actually that Ludden just clipped him as he uh, made that shot. But suddenly, for a moment, Orient were in the deepest of trouble. As the snow flurries continue again with a header that went straight to Russell. Now, Russell claimed that Ludden just caught him, as he probably did too, just as uh, Russell was about to shoot. Cooper. Ryan. Power to cut. My Whitbread. Ben Stock. Whitbread again, knocking it forward. Otto's there, but it's Sinclair's ball. Good scoring record, Orient. 
in the uh, Stockport in this division have scored more home goals. They've got 38 to Orient's 36. Don't mind you saying that Stoke in their home games, mind you, they've had they've played more away games than home of Stoke, so that's promising for them. Stoke so far in their home games have scored only 29 compared to Orient's 34. But here's Russell doing well for Stoke. And it deflected, it was knocked away. Shaw will try and get it back in, but the ball had crossed the byline for the corner. Good raking run there by Kevin Russell. And again, the deflection, again, Heald was down well. But there must have been an infringement, actually, as uh, that shot went in. Because uh, Heald certainly pushed it behind the byline. But out of my vision, the linesman must have had the flag up for an offside or something. season but the shooting was a lot better than that minutes of the first half left now. Cooper might take advantage of this. It's lost there by Cleghorn. He's had a chip there for Carter. Now, can he get the cross, though? Into the left foot. All right. It's knocked away. Some good defending there by Cranston. Carter playing it in once more. A super goal by Mark Cooper. Under five minutes of the first half left, Mark Cooper notches his 11th of the season, meeting their header beautifully. Danny Carter flighting it in superbly. He's a big man, Cooper, but he got up well and put it well wide of Sinclair to put Orient into the lead. in by Vaughan Ryan. Okay. Bitterly cold afternoon, but at the moment, Orient are warming up their promotion prospects. Sinclair comes out, beats Cooper to the ball. defending early on when Stoke looked so confident and comfortable but uh, the Leighton Orient more and more got into this game a lot of grafting in the midfield by the likes of Vaughan Ryan and then eventually towards the end of the half that cross coming in from Danny Carter and Mark Cooper rising so beautifully to put Orient 1-0 ahead so that's the halftime situation here at Leighton Orient they lead Stoke by 1-0 
bench that's in very good shape. A team that's also in very good shape, leading by a goal to nil Orients. Seeking with the wind behind them to push home their advantage and push their championship hopes even brighter. On the right of the pitch, you'll see there with his hands to his eyes there, Jeff Pike. West Ham fans will remember him, of course, one of the coaches here. John Butler with it. Graham Shaw in a corner of Dominic Ladden. Stoke City. Kevin Russell with it. Big man up from the back again. They've left just up of the full back behind. It's Carter's clearance. And there was a shout of a handball, but referee and linesman didn't uh, spot it or weren't aware of it. A goal kick to Orient. 10,798, just about Orient's biggest crowd of the season. Adrian Whitbread quickly in there, and now Ricky Otto. Franson doing well. Extremely good, sensible play there. Very cool indeed. Butler. Warren Hackett. Getting through a good game for Lake Norrie this afternoon. Ricky Otto into the place of uh, Danny Benstock. Benstock in there again, but there was a foul that time on the Stoke player. Carl Beast and a free kick to the visitors. It's big bits over, so we'll take four. Long towards Steen. Hackett there with him, but Steen nonetheless put his header in. I uh, guess that Hackett is probably four or five inches taller than uh, Mark Steen. Russell. Turning in, this could be dangerous. Not back for Steen. Just over the top. A glorious opportunity that for Stoke. Just got under it. Good work here by Russell. Yes, it probably was just bouncing awkwardly as it got to him. Just nipped up a little bit. Doing a terrific job here, Peter Eustace. Player with none too happy at the moment with one or two of the players at any rate. And underneath it though for Stoke. Now we're trying to keep it going. Cooper got in the uh, header. Ryan again. Allowed to go wide there. Now what sort of cross can he put in? He finds Danny Carter with it. Swiftly challenged though by Overson. Carter down for the moment and injured just off the field. And Bellamy with the clearance for Lake Norient. throw. It's a no-nonsense challenge, but a fair one there by Ian Cranston on uh, Danny Carter. Carter certainly felt it. Here's Cooper now. Can Otto get there first? Try to back heel. Brian, good pressure this from Orient. Touched by Terry Howard. of anxiety now in that Stoke City defence. Corner. Be taken by Otto. Bellamy at the near post. Look for the little flick on, I thought there, but in fact uh, his header comes back to Otto. Knocked it in again. Behind for another corner. Taxi off Carl Beeston that time. Pants on there too. Sanford's in there. Otto again with the corner. 
Cooper will be one of the targets. Whitbread's up in there as well. Oh, my goodness. And the keeper crashed against the post there. The ball had come floating in on the breeze, no doubt. And Sinclair really had to go cracking away across that goal. He cannoned into the post. It comes the corner again. Not such a good one that time. Hitting low, but uh, Orient still trying to keep this pressure going. And then Glenn Horn in the end gets it away. There was really emergency action there by uh, keeper Ronnie Sinclair. Just a moment ago, as Ricky Otto's corner came in. on the far side for Stoke. Steen being shadowed by Hackett. Still gets it back to Russell. Touch him now to Gleghorn. Shot on the turn. And a goal kick for Lake Norient. 20 minutes of the second half gone. Charged down by Cooper. Sanford chasing, so too is Howard. Sanford gets there first. With Brett. lead of theirs of 10 points red hot favorites to take one of the uh, direct promotion places but orient in third place just one point behind second place port vale but they're certainly looking for the other one and this win today will put them in great shape that's if they can hold on to it fisted away there by healed knocked back again and I wonder if that might have got caught on the breeze beaston shot but, uh, it's over for the goal kick Orion won't want to put themselves through the agonies of the playoffs. Cooper knocked it out and Beeston's shot just over the crossbar. Ben Stock away. And the keeper's ball. Ronnie Sinclair, born in Sterling. Had a spell with Forrest and Wrexham. Short spell with Leeds and joined uh, Stoke from Bristol City. Offside flag up on the far side against Stoke City this time, but the referee said play on, and Foley got in there. And uh, the linesman was certainly flagging there. Whether Orient for the moment took their eyes off him and looked at the linesman, uh, the referee certainly said play on. And Orient in the wars, Vaughan Ryan and goalkeeper Paul Heald. Suddenly there was real danger here for Orient. Foley it was, gets the shot in, charged down by a combination of keeper and uh, midfielder. I don't quite know what he was flagging for, but uh, the referee said play on. It looked as though there might have been an element of handball there, but the flag was up long before that. Good news for Orient, it looks as though both are up and about their business. But a corner for Stoke. Oh, this might be difficult times for Lake Norient. Russell with the corner. Flicked on and knocked away. It was Shaw who got a touch on it. 
And another one. Corner will be taken uh, fairly quickly now by Kevin Russell. And keeper did well. So here's Russell with another one. Shaw trying to get on the end of it. Over the top goal kick. The crisis over for the moment for Orient. Graham Shaw having his second period at uh, Stoke City between those two spells he had a time at Preston so the latest Kevin Russell corner a little bit of a problem for a moment but then Shaw shot over the crossbar Foley Butler gets it back to goalkeeper Ronnie Sinclair. Oh, here's Foley. Good play again by uh, Gary Bellamy. Plenty of experience, 30 years old, formerly with Wolves. And more than 150 games for them at Molyneux. There's Russell playing it in, and Steen, oh, across the face of the goal again. Don't take your eyes off him for a moment. And Stoke at the moment having a good spell. Russell causing problems. Comes into Steen on the half volley, and always going wide of the goal. Taking Graham Shaw off our Stoke City. Bringing on uh, big David Regis, a Londoner. Walk from Plymouth Argyle. Five goals to his credit this season. He had a bit of weight and power and punch, they hope, up front now. clearance for Ricky Otto to chase. John Butler's played him well. Good jump that time by Warren Hackett, but another throw to Stoke. Stoke beginning to look quite ominous now. They're having uh, more of the game, certainly, than Orient. More of the attacking and Sanford playing it forward again towards Regis. Beeston trying to keep it going. Finds Greg Bourne. Carl Beeston. Foley. Trying to shimmy wide of uh, Ryan. Ryan. Now Steen. There's his shot. Not a bad effort, just curling that fraction too high. Another goal kick for Lake Norient. Ten minutes of this match left. He's not given Carter a chance there, but fortunately for Orient, Beeston's touch was not a good one. Carter, Ludden, into Otto. Across the goal there, saved by Sinclair. Looking to get Stoke on the move again quickly. Regis. Easton. That's a foul. Free kick to Stoke. Russell going into the central areas as Butler lines up this free kick. Floated in there. Plenty of shirts up from Stoke City, including Overson. Sanford playing it in again, Gleg Horn with a little back header, Regis trying to get it on towards Steen once more, can Steen finish this one off? And in the end, Orient Boot gets there first and pokes it clear. Butler knocks it back in again. Bellum is head up. And Carter gets it away to cheers from the Orient faithful. 
Orient bench urging their team to come forward now to get away from that penalty area as Overson knocks it up there again. This should be Bellamy's ball, and it is. Back to Overson, though. Up to Gleghorn. Sanford playing it in towards Regis. Again, Bellamy's there for Orient. Out to Otto. Cooper battling with Overson. And Overson gets it back to his goalkeeper. Coming towards the last minute of the game now. Ryan, the chance is on now for them. Across the face of that Stoke City goal, just beyond the far post for a goal kick. And that would have taken all the doubts away from Orient. Leading by 1-0, the last seconds of the game. Sinclair with the kick. Good break here by Vaughan Ryan. Trying to bring uh, Robert Taylor on, I think. Well, it's an old device. It takes up a few more seconds to make Orient feel a little happier. Robert Taylor coming back from injury. Yeah, top scorer, actually, formerly with Norwich. He's been out for about four games. 13 goals this season. Not yet 100% match hardened after his injury. Bellamy gets it forward. Taylor gets it away. Important for Orient to keep their discipline and their lead now. Carter up to Cooper. Here's Carter. He's played well. Oh, and a lovely little ball. Can Cooper get on the end of that? Some delightful play by Danny Carter there. Playing time added on. And Bellamy plays it for Howard. And here's Taylor. Good shot. Keeper hits it straight at Cooper, which wasn't the cleverest thing to do. Orient pulling everybody back. Just a few more seconds. What a vital three points it could be. Sinclair way out of his goal. Eyes on the referee as Hackett goes up and beats Regis in the air. Carter tries to get Cooper on the go. Russell on the far side. Ryan's been flagging for a free kick to uh, Leighton Orient. seconds of time added on has been played Stoke facing their first defeat in the league since early in the season 25 matches ago up goes Cooper Carter chasing good display at right back by uh, John Butler but Carter just got the better of him there signing Dominic Ludden Overson away Ryan couldn't get on the end of that one Steen it's a victory for Orient, another push towards promotion to the first division. And Stoke's first defeat in the league for 25 games. And just one goal just before half-time, separating these two sides. Scored with a tiring header by Mark Cooper. His 11th of the season, and maybe the most important one of all so far as Orient are concerned. It'll do their confidence no harm at all to have beaten the runaway league leaders. By one goal to nil. So joy and jubilation in this part of East London. And the final score here at Brisbane Road, Leighton Stadium. It's Leighton Orient 1, Stoke City 0. Peter, you've had a go at your team in recent weeks. You must be proud of what they did, though, against Stoke. Well, the commitment and the, um, the word I've been looking for is responsibility that they've got to show. And I think in the second half today, when they were really up against it, and we saw the very, very best of Soak City. I thought they were very, very responsible. They kept at their jobs, and look what they've done. They've come away with three points. Heck of a hard team to beat, aren't they, Stoke? Absolutely. I mean, we've been in that position with them earlier on this year at Stoke City, and we were 1-0 up with three minutes to go, like, and we were sat there thinking, are we going to do it this time? So you can imagine what we were going through, the staff and the players and everybody else involved in Leighton Orient. We've been there once before, apart from the last three minutes. You've been also very close to getting out of this division and it didn't happen for you last season. How are you going to change that this time round? Well, hopefully that this time round they won't have to do what we had to do last year. We had to sell players. 
because the football club was in a situation where it needed some money quickly and we had to sell our leading goal scorer Kevin Nugent and I think that had a lot to do with it and then along came a couple of injuries uh, and unfortunately the last six games we didn't win any games um, I don't think that will happen this year I think the players have grown up I think the football club are not in that situation so we're looking forward to the, the last 14 games you had 10,000 people here today. It was very much your cup final, wasn't it? Yeah, it's not often we get a full crowd or get into double figures down there. We had a big crowd versus West Brom. Uh, it'd be nice to see them week in, week out. I mean, obviously, Stoke have bought a few today. But, uh, you know, the crowd was uh, tremendous, and we're going to need more of that if we're going to get where we're going to go, you know? Looking at uh, the top of the table, I think your lead has been cut down to seven points now. But, I mean, that's where you'd choose to be, isn't it? Most certainly. Uh, you ask any manager in our league, and to be at the top's the best place because... We come to places like this, we're well aware we can drop points, we're well aware we can lose. Uh, if you've got the points in the bag, you can, you know, you really can afford to do it. Very tough fixture for us out of the way, and, uh, you know, we're delighted we've got it out of the way now. What would you say is the main quality in your side that uh, produced this fantastic unbeaten run, 25 matches? I, I think we showed even today that uh, we keep going uh, right up to the last five minutes. Uh, I think everybody in the ground who supported the audience was whistling, hoping the referee would blow his whistle. Uh, we're never beaten, Jim, and, and in fairness to the lads today, there was very little I could say to them in the, in the dressing room when they come in, except uh, it wasn't our day, uh, we didn't get the points, roll on Wednesday. Or it felt they owed you one, I think. Probably did. You know, we've been here before, and on occasions we've been here, they've probably played, played as well as us, but not, and they've not managed to beat us. Uh, today they probably didn't play as well as us, <laughs> and they've gone and beaten us. <laughs>